Hey guys, welcome back. As many of you know, I'm here in New York City for the past five months filming a show for HGTV called Hot Mess House, where I declutter and organize really messy spaces and transform their homes based on their organizing style. Because season two airs in just over two weeks, I thought it'd be really fun to treat you like you were on the show. I'm gonna show you exactly, step by step, how I declutter really big, crazy messy spaces really fast. We do have some PAs that help, but they're helping with the camera crew. So it's just me and the homeowners. And we are decluttering very cluttered spaces all by ourselves. Most of the time we can do this in one day. The longest this has taken us is a few days to completely empty these spaces. And we're not just clearing it out and like putting it in a trailer. We are making decisions on this stuff. I'm gonna show you how right now. So what you're gonna need to do this is a donatable donation box. So a box that you don't mind actually getting rid of and some garbage bags. You probably, if you have a lot of paper, you're gonna want a recycling bag or a trash bag for trash. And you're also gonna want something to catch the does not belong. So you can just set it to a pile to the side or you can have a designated bin that you can carry around and put away later. And that's literally all you need. I'm going to show you a couple of different spaces, how to declutter in those different spaces, but the technique is basically the same. So you ready for some coaching with Cass? Let's get started. Are you ready? You only start with one drawer, one part of a closet, one cabinet, or one pile at a time. And we're not organizing, we're only decluttering. Resist the urge to take everything out, make a huge mess, make lots of piles. That is the opposite of decluttering and you're just creating more work for yourself. So what you wanna do first is pick a spot in your home that you wanna do a quick declutter of and remember the two rules. If you don't like something and if you wouldn't buy it again, it goes. So if you're not using it, you don't like it, and if you didn't own it and you wouldn't buy it again, so go ahead and open a drawer, pull something out. Don't just look in the drawer for things that can go. Take it out so you can really ask yourself, first of all, this doesn't belong. <laughs> this is Aunt Bait. This is gonna go in the does not belong, but pull something out. Again, this isn't my home. This is an Airbnb. This isn't my stuff, but I can still say like, what is this? We're not using these coasters. They can go. Trust your first instinct and make fast decisions. Touch it once. These are out of the package. They're probably grimy. This is grimy. This can just go in the trash because nobody wants to. Now this is keep. We're going to set keep aside to put back in the drawer. This is probably keep. This is keep. This is keep. This is trash. This thing may be keep, this is trash. This is keep, this is keep, this is trash. This is trash, this is trash, this is keep. And just like that, we've decluttered a drawer. Super, super fast. Don't overthink it. And the magic really is taking an item out and then asking yourself, you know, the questions. As soon as you take something out, you're able to really see it in a different light. Like, why did I keep, what is this? No, this is going, <laughs> right? It's taking it out, holding it up and looking at it. Just looking in a pile, just looking in a drawer isn't going to help you when it comes to decluttering. Now that we have everything that's a keep up here, we can say, what doesn't belong back in this drawer? The knives have a spot for knives in here and the rest of the things I can put back. We're not organizing, we're gonna do that later. It doesn't matter if there's other things in the house that belong in here, that's fine. We've just decluttered one drawer and we're moving on. You're gonna use this exact same technique for big piles too. Pulling something out of the pile, making a quick decision. If it's a keep, just set it down. If it's a go, put it in a box, put it in a bag to get out of your home. Don't worry if there's still things left in a pile. Don't worry about the mess that isn't perfect now. This is just about getting as much as possible out. And the only way to do that is to take an item and hold it up, see it in a different light from the pile, away from the other stuff, so you can make a real decision on it. 
So here's how you really quickly declutter clothing without making a mess. I want you to go to your closet and I don't want you to Marie Kondo it. I don't want you to pull everything out, but I can't have you just look at your closet and try to find things that are gonna go. When a closet's all smooshed together like this, it's hard to see your individual pieces and your anxiety is high and you're like, but I love my clothes and I love everything and I wear everything and I don't wanna get rid of anything. So this is what you do. You pull out one thing and I want you to look at it separate from your clothing. I have not worn this since I've been here. It's not really me, it can go. If it doesn't fit you right now, it doesn't belong in your closet. It doesn't mean you have to donate it. You can put it in a box that can be stored under your bed. You can vacuum seal it. You can put it in storage, but it doesn't belong in here. So pull something out. If you didn't own this, would you buy it again? And the answer for this sweater is no, because it has like a tortoise necklace. Why? This looks so bad on me. This is gonna go. Okay, it's just going. But you pull something out. Do I like this? Does it fit me? Would I buy it again? If it's a yes, you turn the hanger backwards. So you know you've dealt with this item, right? And that way you can pick away at your closet, pull something out. Do I like this? Yes. Turn the hanger backwards. Pull it out. Look at it away from your clothing so you can objectively make a decision. Does it fit me? Do I like it? Would I buy it again? Yes. Put it back with the hanger facing out. We're not organizing. We're not color coordinating. We're just decluttering our clothing. Using this technique, you can do your entire closet in a short amount of time. And even if you run out of time or you start getting bored, you can stop and see exactly where your progress is because everything you've made a decision on has been turned backwards. If you're working with a really, really cluttered space like I am with Hot Mess House, work that box, make tough, decisions really push yourself out of your comfort zone and stop yourself from sorting this is just about editing it's just about thinning it out we're going to go back and organize it all later first you have to get that pile down you have to get that closet down you have to get that space having less stuff and the only way to really do that is to pick something out of the pile look at it in a different light and make a decision Here's my biggest and best piece of advice for you. If you're not sure if you should keep something or not, you shouldn't keep it. If it isn't a hard yes, it's a hard no. When you pick something up out of that pile and you're like, yes, I love this, keep it. Yeah, I, I use this all the time, keep it right? That's how you declutter. You're making those quick decisions. You're trusting your body. You're trusting your instincts, whether you need to keep something or not. You're not letting anxiety control you. You are not letting your stuff control you. You are the boss of your stuff and your belongings and the clutter ends now. You're taking back control of your home and it starts with filling boxes and bags of only the stuff that you don't like and that you wouldn't buy again. So what are you waiting for? Grab a box, grab a bag, head to a drawer or a closet or a cabinet or a pile in your house, pick something up and trust your gut. Make a decision whether it stays or it goes. And remember, all the things on your surfaces are probably stuff that you're actually using and your actual clutter, the things you're not using and loving are hidden in cabinets, in closets, in drawers. So make room for the things you are using and loving today by getting stuff out. You deserve a home that's easier to maintain and decluttering is going to save you money. It's gonna save you time. It's gonna make your home more effortless to maintain, but best of all, it's gonna make you feel really proud of yourself. And this is not something that happens overnight. Do not jump to organizing. It starts with decluttering and then we organize. If you try to jump this step, you're setting yourself up for failure. So happy decluttering. You deserve this. So thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to share a quick sneak peek of Hot Mess House with you right now. And now a special HGTV sneak peek. 
I'm Cassandra Arson, and I'm an organizing expert. Let's make the home work for you, not try to make you work for the home. I call Wendell whenever I need to take all my disorganized organizing thoughts and make magic out of them. These are real families with real amounts of clutter. Let's make a mess! And they're making real transformations in just a few days. This is a lot of stuff, and it's been here seven years. And many of the things have been here 10, 15 years or so. I don't usually feel overwhelmed. I'm feeling overwhelmed. It does feel great to have space again. So now that this is literally a blank slate, it's Wendell's job to make it gorgeous. Oh, wow. And this picture frame converts into a table. Comes down and it reveals. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. My family is leaving in a couple of days. They're gonna go back home and I'm gonna stay here in New Jersey for another month or so while we finish up filming. I'm gonna miss them so much. But uh, we went to Coney Island together <laughs> as like our last hurrah weekend together. Coney Island is a cesspool. No, it's not a cesspool. Is it a is it? A, is it? It's um, not what I expected. It's like it's seen some things, you guys. It's like it's seen hurricanes. And it's very old and very crowded and very overpriced and dated. And also, the rides I feared for my life. I'm not sure. The cyclone should be quarantined. I was pretty sure I was gonna fly out at any moment. And my 12 year old's like, woo, hands up the whole time. There's nothing but a lap bar holding you in. And there's like six to eight inches of space between me and the lap bar. And so she could have flown out at any moment. All of Coney Island is crazy. That's all I have to say. It's just, it's a trip, you guys. It's a trip. <laughs> we had a good time though. It was so, so fun. Um, but I felt like, I don't know, it just, um, it almost made it better that it was so crazy pants. It almost made it like funny. It was like a zoo. It was like you were in a zoo, people watching and seeing the things that shouldn't be allowed. And you're like, is that legal? And I don't know, is, is that person urinating? That guy's taking a deuce right there on the beach. We saw somebody almost drown and then they got rescued. It was like the most exciting, terrifying, coolest day I've ever had. So if you've never been to Coney Island, I don't know, you kinda gotta try it, but be warned. Be warned. It's bad. It's a good bad. It's so bad it's good. It's bad though. And if, if, you, if you've been to Coney Island, you know exactly what I mean. People tried to warn me before I went. They were like, yeah, this is real bad. And I was like, hmm, seems so lovely on TV. Um, I did have Nathan's hot dog though, and that was delicious. And caramel apples and cotton candy. And we won a bunch of, anyways, it was, it was, it was really fun. So that was like the cherry on top of our New York experience. I'll see you guys next time.